Plasticity 3D is a relatively new entrant in the world of 3D modeling software, designed to bridge the gap between CAD and polygonal modeling. While it has garnered attention for its innovative approach and user-friendly interface, it has yet to achieve widespread adoption amongst 3D artists, designers, and engineers. In this video, we explore four major problems with Plasticity 3D and why many people still hesitate to use it. The long-term viability of a software is a critical consideration, especially for professionals in automotive and aerospace. These fields require tools that are not only powerful and reliable today, but also backed by a clear roadmap, consistent updates, and a strong commitment to future development. Unfortunately, Plasticity 3D's position as a newer and less established player in the market raises significant concerns about its sustainability and ability to meet the evolving needs of these demanding industries. Unlike industry giants such as Autodesk, Fusion 360, AutoCAD, or Desert Systems, SolidWorks, and Katia, which have decades of proven track records and massive corporate backing, Plasticity 3D operates in a more uncertain space. Its smaller development team and lack of a large established user base makes it difficult to predict whether the software will continue to receive the updates and support necessary to keep the pace with the rapidly advancing technologies or not. Maybe it might die off just like Clarice or Uncell and years of muscle memory and work might just vanish or all of a sudden and people don't want that. This uncertainty is compounded by the competitive nature of the 3D software market, where even well-established tools can struggle to maintain relevance. For professionals who rely on their software for mission-critical projects, the risk of investing time and resources into a tool that may not be around in a few years is simply too high. The absence of a clear long-term vision or transparent communication from the developers further exacerbates these concerns. Additionally, plasticity pricing model and update frequency are less predictable compared to the competitors. For example, open source tools like Blender offer complete transparency and community-driven development while subscription-based platforms like Fusion 360 provide regular updates and cloud-based collaboration features. Plasticity 3D's current model leaves many professionals questioning whether it can sustain the level of innovation and support required to remain competitive in the long run. Until Plasticity 3D can demonstrate a clear commitment and long-term growth, stability and industry-specific development, it will struggle to gain the trust of hardcore professionals who cannot afford to gamble on unproven tools. For these users, these stakes are simply too high to risk, adopting a platform with an uncertain future. For hardcore professionals in fields like industry design, mechanical engineering, and precision modeling, Plasticity 3D's lack of industry recognition and ecosystem integration is a significant barrier to adoption. Unlike established CAD tools such as SolidWorks, Fusion 360, or Rhino, Plasticity has yet to earn the trust of major corporations, engineering firms, and design studios. These industries rely on software that is not only powerful but also deeply embedded in their workflows with proven compatibility across teams, clients, and manufacturing processes. Plasticity 3D's inability to seamlessly integrate into these high-stakes environments is a deal-breaker. Additionally, it doesn't offer extensive plugin ecosystems or API support found in tools like Fusion 360 or Blender which allows professionals to customize and automate their workflows. Without these features, Plasticity 3D struggles to compete in industries where precision, reliability, 
and interoperability are non-negotiable. Furthermore, the absence of a robust community or third-party developer support means that users are often left to solve problems on their own. In contrast, tools like SolidWorks or Rhino have decades of community-driven resources, tutorials, and plugins that make them indispensable for hardcore professionals. Until Plasticity 3D can bridge this gap and prove its worth in these demanding fields, it will remain a niche to rather than a serious contender for industry adoption. Although tools like SolidWorks, Fusion 360 Rhino have bunch problems, they are much reliable than Plasticity. Professionals in automotive design aerospace engineering and high-end product development. Plasticity 3D's limited feature set is a glaring weakness when stacked up against established competitors. While the software excels in hard surface modeling and offers a streamlined interface, it falls short in delivering the depth and breadth of tools required for cutting-edge precision-driven work. For instance, Plasticity 3D lacks advanced simulation capabilities such as finite element analysis or computational fluid dynamics, which are critical for engineers and designers working on complex real-world applications. Tools like SolidWorks, Ketia, and Fusion 360 have long been industry standards precisely because they integrate these advanced features into their workflows, allowing professionals to test iterate and validate designs within a single ecosystem. Additionally, Plasticity 3D's rendering and visualization capabilities are rudimentary compared to competitors like Keyshot, Rhino with V-Ray or even Blender's Cycle Engine. For professionals who rely on photorealistic renders to present their works to client or stakeholders, this limitation is a significant drawback. The absence of robust animation tools further restricts its utility in fields like industrial design, where motion studies and dynamics presentation are often required. Moreover, Plasticity 3D's focus on hard surface modeling means it offers little to no support for organic modeling, sculpting or character designing. This narrow scope makes it unsuitable for industries that demand versatility, such as entertainment or consumer product design, where both hard surface and organic forms are often needed in the same project. But we can't really hit hard on this because that is its niche and it should simply be good at it, not necessarily trying to merge organic with inorganic, no. If it's going to focus on organic, then it should do it well. But as it stands, sounds like a, or seems like a one-man project. Until Plasticity 3D expands its feature set to include these advanced tools and capabilities, it will remain a niche solution rather than a comprehensive platform capable of meeting the demands of hardcore professionals in highly technical and competitive fields. Hardcore professionals in precision-driven fields like mechanical engineering, product design, and architecture, Plasticity 3D's steep learning curve is less about difficulty and more about inefficiency. While the software's parametric CAD-like approach is a strength for those already versed in tools like SolidWorks or Fusion 360, it poses a significant challenge for professionals who are deeply entrenched in polygonal modeling workflows, such as game, asset creators, or VFX artists. The issue lies in the fundamental shift in mindset required to use plasticity effectively. Hardcore polygonal modelers, accustomed to the flexibility of tools like Blender or Maya, often find plasticity 3D's constraint-based measurement heavy approach restrictive and unintuitive. For example, creating complex organic shapes or iterating quickly on design tasks that are second nature in polygonal modeling can feel cumbersome and 
overly technical in plasticity 3d this disconnect is particularly problematic for studios and professionals who need to switch between workflows seamlessly in industries like game development or film production where speed and adaptability are critical the time investment required to master plasticity 3d's workflow is often seen as unnecessary until plasticity 3d can offer a more intuitive bridge between cut precision and polygonal flexibility it risks alienating a significant portion of hardcore 3d professionals who prioritize efficiency and creative freedom over rigid procedural modeling and so this is all i have for you concerning plasticity and why i personally feel it's going to be another on sale more clarice i mean over the years we've seen a lot of softwares die and this particular approach this particular niche is where you find most of them lie in until they collapse and i see plasticity going down that same drain hey i'm not an insider and so i might be wrong but based off what i've seen so far plasticity is simply not far from it it's either maybe a company might purchase it because of certain features that it has just so they could rip the software apart or maybe fans might stop coming in and the software might just get out of production hey if you love this video kindly don't forget to give me a sub like until my next video peace